My name is Nozveda Komganamayab and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new to this channel, please make sure that you subscribe and join the rest of the family. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming through. Thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. Um, so today I'll be covering yet another HIV related topic. Over the last week or so, I'll say we have had a lot of HIV content over the news and it was very important for me to do this video because I think there's also some, you know, misinformation that is out there and it's causing a lot of concern, okay? So about a week ago, we heard that there's a new variant um, that was discovered in the Netherlands. I'm going to be talking about what that means. And secondly, about two days ago, we heard that there's a woman that was killed of HIV and um, yeah, what does that mean? Is there an HIV cure? Um, is it available to the larger population? What does this actually entail? So for the purpose of this video, if you are a doctor or a medical practitioner, this is not the video for you, okay? Because I'm not gonna use any jargon. I'm not going to use any terminology, scientific terminology, because I feel that sometimes we use all these technical you know, terms that most of the information gets lost in translation. And it, with me as well right um a lot of information goes into our heads and we hear what we want to hear so i'm going to be explaining all of this in the most simplest terms so if i don't use a cell one two three four five t okay that there's a purpose why i'm not doing that because for me personally and for my audience i am going to be using the simplest terms so that we can all understand what this all means this video was also inspired by the fact that um, there was a heated debate <laughs> yesterday when I told, you know, some of my followers, some of my friends that I'll be doing this video covering, you know, what does it mean um, that this woman was cured of HIV? Um, and a lot of people obviously came with a lot of theories no there's an hiv cure you should stop misleading people the government just doesn't want um everyone to know that there's a cure there was a doctor but that doctor was killed yo guys i'm not interested in that like I'm, i i don't want to be rude or anything like that or come across as rude but now i just want to work with facts because guys we can't be reckless with such information like we can't be reckless there is someone who does not have adequate access um you know to 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 information that is going to hear these drips and drabs of information um that there's a cure for hiv and subsequently to that they're going to stop taking treatment i'm the first one to say i fool around on social media most of the time but then can we just be careful when it comes to sensitive information honestly can we just be can we just be sensitive can we just be careful okay so i'm going to start um with the woman that was cured of hiv let me start here in the world there's about 10 percent of the population that is resistant to hiv okay so it means that they're the specific gene they're the specific cell within them and it that resists hiv doesn't matter how many times they sleep around. It doesn't matter how many times they're exposed to HIV. They will never get infected. And then, even when they're exposed to HIV, they cannot even infect another person. They cannot get infected. They can also not infect another person. It's about 10% of the population. And researchers say that it is mostly white people that have this particular gene, this particular cell. Okay? That's where I'm going to start. Then... In this case of the woman that was supposedly cured of HIV, they were actually not even curing HIV. This woman had cancer, okay? So she went through radiation, she went through um, chemotherapy, um, apparently she has um, leukemia, right? 
and as part of the intervention to make sure that they handle or control their cancer she undergoes two transplants right the one transplant was from a relative a transplant means they're taking a particular organ or a particular cell from another person and they insert it on your body right so there's a particular cell that they got from a relative inserted into this person's body right it's a very complicated procedure because as we all know for example people that have kidney failure right you can't just get anyone to give you a kidney right it, it, it has to be a match and even when there is a match there is a possibility that your body may reject Yamana, that kidney because to it the first instinct is to fight what is foreign from its body right so there are people that go through that process and become very successful there are people where it becomes a failure the body rejects the organ and it is deemed as a failure right so this this woman in particular uh, to treat once again or to control um the cancer leukemia in this case gets a transplant from a relative a second transplant then also occurs from a person that has this particular gene or a cell that is resistant to HIV. Once again, this person, it doesn't matter how many times they have unprotected sex or be exposed to HIV, they will never get infected with HIV. So the doctors take a cell from that person inserted into this woman's body. Ne? Now, before I move any further, let me say this. If the woman was HIV negative and then taking that cell from that person, it means automatically she will also inherit um, the, the, the gene from that person that if she gets exposed to HIV or if she ever had an unprotected sex, she will also become resistant from HIV. Once again, if this woman was HIV negative and she, uh, um, she gets the transplant from this person who is resistant from HIV, she will also automatically become resistant to HIV. Now in this case, the issue is, is this now person who had taken this particular cell that is resistant from HIV, is this person cured of HIV? That is the question. I'm going to make an example. We need to look at it the similar way that we look at e e ARVs. Okay? You take ARVs every day. And because you take ARVs every day, um, your, your immune system gets suppressed. Okay? It means that e e HIV is so insignificant in your body that uh, they cannot see it. It does not mean that it is not there. It just means that the amount of the HIV in your body is so insignificant that they cannot see it. Now let's go back again to this woman. Before we even go to the HIV, let's even talk about the cancer. There's arguments about there are people that go to irradiation, there are people that go through um, chemotherapy. And it, can we honestly say that Umdu has been completely cured of e e cancer now we know that there are people that have undergone you know these very very vigorous um procedures and they, and they live a long life but then down the line 10 years later it cancer iboy because for that period it was sterilized so when it comes to this cell that is resistant to hiv inserted to this woman's body the hiv became sterilized that the scientists cannot see it now there is an argument on whether or not this person was cured or not okay they cannot see it the person has been off medication for about 14 months but i loved um professor karim's response when he was asked this question can we really say this person was cured and he said scientifically we cannot say a person has been cured now let us analyze the whole procedure right because now the argument was no hang on a sec if this thing could be done to this woman and then why can't it be replicated to everyone and now supposedly everyone can be cured of hiv okay let us go back to one of my first points firstly you need to get someone who has the cell or this gene that is resistant to hiv 
how many people in the in the world have that as i've said only 10 percent or less than 10 percent of the population that is resistant to hiv okay and also if you dissect it further only white people where are they situated in the world and uh, where they're concentrated i mean what is it going to take yaman for this particular 10 person to accommodate how many people right and then let's also go to the fact that uh, you are going to undergo a very vigorous procedure that's not an easy process guys i'm not going to even go to uh, the money that is involved the resources how expensive it is just the physical process the case of this particular person was going through chemo already going through vigorous chemotherapy going through a vigorous process to 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 control um their cancer or get their cancer sterilized i mean how many people can we say we can replicate that procedure to so that is why i'm saying we should really be careful and really understand what was done you know to this woman to say supposedly this woman is cured of hiv it is a very very rare case it was an experiment now it's very exciting it's worth celebrating because it gives us an encouragement and a reassurance that okay over time at least we have not put hiv you know on the sidelines we are dealing with so many other diseases we're dealing with the covid 19 diabetes is still very much prevalent in south africa etb and over time i felt that oh i wonder how far we are in our advancements in eventually getting better um in managing hiv um in, in eventually getting a cure for hiv so these news are absolutely welcomed however we should be very careful how we communicate such news and i'll be very honest when i saw the news when i read some of the articles i felt that some media outlets were basically very reckless and even in the nature of how they were interviewing and um, you know some of the doctors some of the the people that were on the forefront of of this discovery or this experiment i i i felt that we could do better you know to make sure that um the right information um the most clear information is being communicated so in the nutshell is there a cure for hiv no there is no cure for hiv because the process or the experiment that was done on this particular woman cannot be replicated to the entire population so in simplest terms i loved how someone eventually said this because i ran out of words of how to explain this further like i couldn't anymore i tried to use the most simple language um like uh, people were still arguing that there's a cure i'm like i can't do it anymore <laughs> I can't so this person was like listen guys until your clinic says you must stop medication you mustn't stop medication and I couldn't agree with you further and then until uh, 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 your clinic uh, your medical practitioner your doctor your nurse says you must stop it treatment do not stop it treatment please like I can't have that okay let us continue taking our medication let us continue taking care of ourselves so moving on to my next topic we heard about a week ago that there is a new variant, a VB, if I'm not mistaken, um, that was discovered in the Netherlands, a new HIV variant that was discovered in the Netherlands. Now, if you have been following me for quite some time, you would know that at some point, one way or the other, I did explain that there are different variants of, of the HIV virus. Similar to COVID-19, we know that when we were um, you know, um, introduced to COVID-19 two years ago, the variant that we were introduced to is not the variant that we are dealing with now. Um, it keeps on mutating itself, it keeps on changing, um, so it's similar to any other virus. There's, it's no different when it comes to HIV. What is interesting though is that a lot of you know, the headlines and what we were told is that it's a new variant. It's actually not a new variant. Variant. this variant apparently was there more than 30 years ago however it is only being reported um, only now the reason why it was being reported or is raising an alarm is because this particular variant is more aggressive in in a way that it is mutating itself in a way that it is multiplying itself i'll make an example if you are a person that is hiv positive and is not taking any treatment to manage your hiv so if hiv mutates itself 
it replicates itself you know in your body and then it increases the level um, of the virus inside your body so when you're taking ilantuga in medication it decreases the level to a point where they will say you are now suppressed the level at which the virus mutates itself is what is key because eventually if hiv is not treated or managed it mutates itself to a point where it develops it aids yeah? and that's like a more advanced stage of the hiv where people eventually die um, if they do not get the proper help the cause of concern with this particular variant is the level at which it mutates itself the level at which it replicates itself to eventually become aids it's not anything that we have seen before it mutates itself faster than any other variant that we have been exposed to also people that are said to have had this variant are said to have had higher viral loads so if viral load measures the amount of the virus inside your body yeah, that means it is higher than someone who does not have the variant and also people that have this have this variant it is said that they have a lower cd4 count cd4 count measures the amount of white blood cells that are inside your body those white blood cells are very very crucial in terms of fighting off infections so if you have lower um, um, white blood cells it means that the chances of your body fighting off infections are very slim so the people that have this variant it means that the chances of them fighting off the infection it is very low now is this a reason to be concerned it depends on how you look at it but on one hand if scientists says that the available treatment the ARVs that are available to control and manage HIV um, are sufficient to deal with this variant ne? Um, to make sure that you live a longer and healthier life so all you need to make sure is that you continue with the treatment and, um, and you'll be fine. But then on the other hand, one of the reasons why we need to discuss, you know, um, such developments is because there are still areas around the world, even in our own country, where we still have people that do not have access um, to this treatment. We still have people that are still getting infected even today. So our current argument should be, how do we tighten our interventions, our policies to make sure that we reach the most vulnerable? So I hope this video was really helpful. Once again, doctors, scientists, researchers, medical practitioners, please do not come on my comment section and bombard us with those terminologies that we do not understand. And then, um, I did this video on purpose like this because I wanted the everyday person to understand what this news mean and then, without being honestly confused by the terminologies and some of the jargon that we use. So yeah, guys, um, that was it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, bye.